Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the IMO Shortlist 2022 problem A6. At first, let's have a look on the problem statement. We consider the following functional equation, namely f of x plus f of y equals f of x plus f of y for all x, y out of the real numbers. Now, let f be the set of all functions from the real numbers to the real numbers that satisfy this functional equation. Our task is to find all rational numbers q such that we can find for every function f out of the set f a real number set such that f of z equals q times z. At first, we try to figure out some properties of all the functions in our set f. Therefore, we try the standard approach to plug in x equals y equals zero in the functional equation. This yields that f of f of zero is equal to two times f of zero. And here we indeed found our first rational number q, namely q equals two satisfies this condition here for z equals to f of zero. Moreover, we are able to deal with f of f of zero. So we can try to plug in f of zero into our functional equation. So let x be equal to f of zero and y be equal to zero again to get that f of this time 2f of zero is equal to f of f of zero, which is two times f of zero plus f of zero. So we have three times f of zero on the right hand side. This gives us our next value for q, namely q equals three divided by two, because for z equals to two times f of zero, we have f of z equals three divided by two times z. At this point, we see that we can go on with the strategy and for example, plug in now two times f of zero for x into the functional equation. Using induction, this allows us to prove that for all k greater than or equal to one, we have that f of k times f of zero is equal to k plus one times f of zero. This gives us a whole set of values for q, namely all values for q where q is equal to k plus one divided by k and k is greater than or equal to one. We can also prove this identity here for negative k, for example, by induction. But there's also a shorter way, namely by plugging in x equals to minus k times f of zero and y equals to k times f of zero. We get that f of minus k times f of zero plus f of k times f of zero, which is by this identity here, k plus one times f of zero is equal to f of minus k times f of zero plus again k plus one times f of zero. The left hand side equals f of f of zero, so two times f of zero, and therefore after bringing the k plus one times f of zero to the left hand side, we get that minus k plus one times f of zero is equal to f of minus k times f of zero. Since k can attain any arbitrary positive integer, we know that this identity here also holds for negative values of k, and therefore we figured out some new solutions for q, namely all q of the form k plus one divided by k, where k is less than or equal to minus one. In total, we know that all values of q of the form k plus one divided by k, where k is not equal to zero work. And indeed, these are the only possible values for q. It is a hard part of the problem to realize that these are the only solutions and to try to prove that there are no other ones. One motivation for this could be that we can't get anything out of this approach except for what we already did. To prove that there are no other values for q satisfying the given conditions, we want to construct a function f such that for each set out of the real numbers, we have f of z is not equal to q times z. To do this, the following observation is crucial, namely that every function satisfying that f of x is always an integer and satisfying that f of x plus one equals f of x plus one are functions in our set f. From the second identity here, induction directly tells us that for every integer k, we have that f of x plus k is equal to f of x plus k. Now, since our first identity says that f of y is an integer, we can use this equation here to get that all these functions f are indeed in our set f. At this point, 
we want to consider some q that is not equal to k plus 1 divided by k for all integers k and want to construct our function f in such a way that for all real numbers z, we have that q times z is not equal to f of z. Using this identity here, we can write z equal to x plus k for some x in the interval between 0 and 1 and k to be an integer. We want to divide this equation by x plus k, but we have to watch out that x plus k is not equal to 0. And therefore, we have to at first consider the case where this is equal to 0, or in other words, where x is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, we want to have that f of k is not equal to k times q. If we take f of 0 equals 1, we get that k plus 1 should be not equal to k times q. For k equals 0, this is true because 1 is not equal to 0. And otherwise, this is equivalent to q is not equal to k plus 1 divided by k, which is exactly our assumption here. It is left to deal with the case where x is not equal to 0. And here, we can divide by x plus k to get that q is not equal to f of x plus k divided by x plus k. Using this identity here, we get that our right hand side is equal to f of x plus k divided by x plus k. And this can be also written as 1 plus f of x minus x divided by x plus k. If x is irrational, this inequality clearly holds because f of x is an integer and therefore this fraction here is irrational, but q is rational. So we only have to deal with the case that x is rational, so x can be written as a divided by b, where a and b are co-prime integers and a is greater than 0. We also want to write q in terms of integers. Moreover, we want to get rid of this plus 1 here on the right hand side. Therefore, our idea is to write q to be equal to 1 plus c divided by d. We again want c and d to be integers, c greater than or equal to 0, and that c and d are co-prime. Moreover, we have the condition that q is not equal to k plus 1 divided by k. Therefore, we can additionally assume that c is not equal to 1. Plugging in this value for q and this value here for x, we get a new inequality, namely that c divided by d should be not equal to f of x minus a divided by b divided by a divided by b plus k. Multiplying top and bottom of the right hand side with b gives us that this is equal to b times f of x minus a divided by a plus b times k. From the fact that c is not equal to 1 and greater than or equal to 0, we know that there exists a prime number p such that p divides c. Since c and d are co-prime, it would be therefore enough to choose f of x in such a way that the numerator on the right hand side is not divisible by p. If a is not divisible by p, then we can just choose f of x to be equal to 0 and then p does not divide minus a. Otherwise, b can't be divisible by p because a and b are co-prime. Therefore, we can just choose f of x to be equal to 1 and then p also does not divide b times f of x minus a. Therefore, in any case, we are able to choose f of x in such a way that this here holds and therefore we are done.